Yo, 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 what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I just wanted to show a little something different. Not a full sample cook up video, but just something that I've been doing a lot recently that's been helping me with my workflow. This is a method I've been using a lot to create starters and full samples. And it overall just helps with my workflow, so I just wanted to share it with you guys and go over how I do it. The one thing I've been doing for a while when I make a sample is I'll take a part of it. So for example, I have the sample pulled in here, Frostbite 144, G-Sharp Minor. I'll go ahead and just play out sounds. But one thing I've been doing when I make samples is I'll take a certain part of the sample. So I'll go in and I'll play this part, for example. Like just that, and I'll cut that out and I'll add like a bass to it, maybe some more effects and I'll manipulate it. And I'll make a starter out of that and then either send out that starter or just make a whole new sample out of that starter. So it basically just helps with workflow so you don't have to start from scratch every single time and you can still do solo loops, basically using your own loops as a starter. So that's a good tip for increasing your workflow, but I've also started doing something that I think is even better and just another way to take your samples and make something completely new out of them. So using this one as an example, I have the full sample right here. And instead of taking a part, like a stem from the sample and manipulating it, what I do is I take a part of the sample. So for this one, I basically just took the whole part that doesn't have the base. And you'll see why I don't want the base in a second, but basically I just take this whole part right here. So the whole completed sample and I just render that out brought it in and I opened up SliceX and you can use SliceX or you can use uh, Fruity Slicer. They're both pretty easy to use. I think Fruity Slicer is a little bit easier to use. I don't know why I use SliceX for this one. But yeah, you basically just open up the sample, right click, go into the audio editor, right click anywhere where it says sample rate or any of that. And then you want to make sure that you click tempo sync under tempo and then hit accept. And then you can just take this button right here and drag the sample directly into either SliceX or Fruity Slicer. And then once you have it in, you can just cut it by going to auto slice and going to either medium grid slicing or large grid slicing. For this one I use medium because I like the smaller chops. So when you drag it in it looks like this and if I were to play it it just sounds like the original sample. But what you can do is you can take your own sample and you can basically make a whole new sample out of it by just chopping it up and manipulating it. So for this one I came up with this pattern right here. So you can hear how that sounds completely different from the original. So then as you can see right here, I have it rendered out and then I pitched it up about seven semitones. And I've found that usually when I do this and I chop my samples up, I like pitching it up anywhere from like four to seven semitones, something like that. It usually just sounds better and it helps make it sound a lot more different from the original. And then I actually sped it up as well. So I went all the way to 165 BPM. And then as you can see, I have a part where it's half timed and EQ just to take out the low and the high end. And then I also added a piano. So yeah, I just rendered this out as a starter and I sent that out as a starter, but if I wanted to, I could have made a whole new sample out of this. So basically you're taking a sample that you already made and you're chopping it up and you're using it to basically create something completely new. And like I said, this really helps with speeding up your workflow so you don't have to start from scratch every time you want to make a sample. All right, so here's another example where I actually made a full sample out of it. I brought in this sample right here. It's called Red Key 155 BPM. We'll go ahead and play it. What I did is I just went in and EQ'd out the bass because when you chop up a sample, you don't want the bass to be in there. It just sounds kind of weird. Yeah, as you can see right here, I have it chopped. Yeah, as you can hear. Yeah, as you can see right here, I have it without the stems. I just rendered this part out. For this one, I used Fruity Slicer instead of Slice X. And in my opinion, Fruity Slicer is better because you can control the clicking. And the other one, you can hear there's kind of a clicking noise. And this one, you just want to turn the attack up and the decay up a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, I dragged it in and I just went here to the Slice tool, went down to Beat, and clicked Beat, chopped it up for every beat. And then I came up with this pattern right here. Yeah, just something simple, um, and I knew I wanted to add to that. See, as you can see right here, I have it rendered out. I pitched it up seven semitones again, and then I reverse it, and I added some effects. So I just added an EQ and then a shaper box to uh, make the volume duck every half bar. Then I added this arpeggio from Analog Lab.
Just added a simple piano. And then a phrase loop from an HZE kit. And then the last thing that I did is I sped it up to 162 BPM. And everything together, it sounds like this. Yeah, as you can hear, a whole different vibe. You can't even tell it's from the original sample. And I got this sample done a lot quicker than I would have if I tried to do this from scratch. So this is one last example where I made another starter using the same technique. As you can see, I have this sample that's pulled in at 146 BPM. I cut out the part without the bass, so this whole part right here. Did the same thing I did with the other ones where I just dragged it into Fruity Slicer, went to the Slice tool and went down to Beat and then I just came up with a pattern that sounded a little bit different. Something pretty simple, I just rendered that out and again I pitched it up three semitones, added an EQ to take out some of the frequencies that I didn't want and boost some of the high end. Then I added this phrase loop and just made sure it matched the key of the sample right here. And then I actually sped this one down, so I went down to 142 BPM. So again, I just rendered this out as a starter, but I could have made a full sample out of it if I wanted to. All right, so that's pretty much it for the video. I just wanted to show you guys this technique I've been doing to increase my workflow. But hopefully you guys learned something new. Hopefully you took something away, and I'll see you in the next video.